Hi there, Luke here with another video. For those of you unfamiliar with our channel, my husband Tyler and I make weekly travel videos where we document our experiences since moving from North America to the UK. In our last video, we took you to the seaside locations of Portugal of Benicia and the Berlingish Islands. Whereas in this video, we're going to continue on our journey that we did in Portugal, this time to the central Portuguese towns of Obidus, Batalha, Tomar, Coimbra, and Mosanto. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to give a comment, like, subscribe, and a tip with the super thanks button if you're so inclined. Super helpful for this channel. All right, let's dive right into it, starting with the town of Obidush. Obidush was honestly one of our favorite small towns in central Portugal. Obidush is located on a hilltop encircled by a fortified wall and remains a well-preserved example of medieval architecture. The ancient town walls, also known as the Muralhas da Cidade, are still relatively intact and you can walk along the top of them for great panoramic views of the town. In order to get here, we parked our car at the aqueduct just outside town. This aqueduct is just a short distance to the main entrance of the town and is a great place to start. In order to enter Obidush, we entered through the Porta da Vila, or the town gate, which was a great way to get a first impression of this gorgeous town. Throughout the town, there are these famous blue tile paintings called the Azulejo tile paintings. And at the nearby pretty chapel, you can find these tiles depicting the Passion of Christ. The Rua Direita, or the main street, is the main cobblestone street that leads through town up to the castle. The street is lined with Baroque style churches, family run restaurants, and unique shops. We stopped briefly at one of the shops to get our favorite Portuguese treat, of course, pastéis de nata. We finished our time in Obidush with a visit to the beautiful Obidush Castle. Each July, Obidush Castle hosts a traditional medieval market. For two weeks, the castle and the surrounding town recreate the spirit of medieval Europe. We walked along the ancient town walls with views of the castle and town in all directions. As you walk through here, you can certainly understand how this is an ideal setting for a medieval market because it definitely has a very old medieval castle type vibe. While we personally drove to Obidush, it is a fun fact to be aware of that there is a day trip option from Lisbon where you can get an express bus from Lisbon to Obidush that only takes about an hour. So that's an option if you don't have a car and you want to visit this charming town by public transport. After our time in Obidush, we headed to our next town, which is the town of Batalha. The main attraction in Batalha is Batalha Monastery. In Portuguese, it is often referred to as the Mosteiro de Batalha. However, its full name is Mosteiro de Santa Maria da Vitoria, or in other words, the Monastery of Saint Mary of the Victory. This whole town is called Batalha because it is named to represent the victory of the Portuguese troops at the Battle of Aljubarrota in the year 1385. Batalha Monastery is the most important Portuguese Gothic building and is quite a prominent one in the Iberian Peninsula as well as for all of Europe. There are a few prominent landmarks within the monastery that are worth visiting, and the first one that we visited was what is called the Founder's Chapel. The Founder's Chapel, or the Capela de Fundador in Portuguese, is where you find the tomb of King João I and his wife, Philippa de Lancaster, who reigned during the 14th and 15th centuries. We particularly enjoyed the way that the light shone through the stained glass windows as it made this area of the monastery quite pretty. Another part of the monastery worth visiting is the royal cloister of King João I, which features intricate carved decor and stunning arches.
Finally, what I would probably personally say is the highlight of the whole monastery is the unfinished chapels, or in Portuguese, the Capelas Imperfeitas. This is considered one of the most famous places at the Batalha Monastery, and the reason why is because it is quite stunning and quite striking to see these ornate walls and arches that were built, but also seeing how unfinished they are with the ceiling never being completed. This reminded me personally of some abbeys that I've seen in the UK in that they have some of the beautiful and intricate arches, but the unfinished ceilings just gave a really interesting juxtaposition to look at, take pictures, and just enjoy walking around and exploring. These unfinished chapels were commissioned by King Duarte in the 15th century for his pantheon. King João III of the 16th century tried to finish the chapels, but as you can see, they were never completed. Moving on to our next town in the central Portuguese region is the town of Tomar. During the 13th century, Tomar was one of the most influential cities on the Iberian Peninsula, being the religious home of the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar was based in the Convento de Cristo, or the Convent of Christ, which is an expansive religious complex and is regarded as one of Portugal's finest national monuments and chief works of the Portuguese Renaissance. The town of Tomar was created inside the walls of the Convento de Cristo and constructed under the Gorders of Gualdin de Paix, the fourth Grand Master of the Knights Templar of Portugal in the late 12th century. Tomar was the last Templar town to be commissioned for construction and one of Portugal's historical jewels. One of the best sites in Tomar is the stunning Charola Church inside the Convento de Cristo. The unique circular church follows the design style of great temples in Jerusalem, and the interior is decorated with some of Portugal's finest sacred art. The oldest medieval urban area of Tomar has a cross-shaped layout, orientated along the points of the compass with a convent at each end. Tomar is filled with crisscrossing cobblestone streets, ancient churches, and traditional style houses. As if these towns weren't enough, the central Portuguese region has even more to offer with our next town, the town of Coimbra. Coimbra is a riverfront city in central Portugal and the country's former capital. It is home to a preserved medieval old town and the historic University of Coimbra. Built on the grounds of a former palace, the university is famed for its Baroque library, the Biblioteca Joanina, and its 18th century bell tower. The university here is actually the oldest university in all of Portugal and the seventh oldest in the world. As I mentioned, the Biblioteca de Joanina is here at the University of Coimbra, and it is quite a beautiful sight to see, but unfortunately they don't allow photos or videos, so I can't really show it to you, but suffice it to say, it is worth seeing if you're in Coimbra. The historical buildings throughout the University of Coimbra were classified as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO in the year 2013. The university complex is set around a formal palace, the Royal Palace of Alcasupa, which was donated to the university by King João III in 1537. If you're here, take the time to climb the tower of the university because this offers excellent views. We finished our time at the university with a visit to the Capelo de São Miguel, which is the king's private chapel. We also enjoyed walking around the city of Coimbra itself, and the city is divided into two areas, the Cidade Alta, or the high town, and the Cidade Baixa, the lower town. The university is located at the top of the city, and the shops and bars and restaurants are located more in the Baixa, or lower area, of the city. Now finally, for our last featured town in the central Portuguese region is the town of Monsanto. 
Monsanto is one of the most unique and charming villages in Portugal. It is situated in the sparsely populated eastern side of Portugal, close to the Spanish border, and is historically considered a defensive stronghold, complete with its own fortress known as Monsanto Castle. The village is perched on top of a hill and interlaced with massive boulders, many of which have been excavated or combined into some houses. Monsanto would become popularly known as the most Portuguese village of Portugal due to a government-sponsored competition that awarded 12 historic villages with this distinction. As you walk through this town, I think you'll quickly see why it won this title, because it does have a slower pace of life that you could imagine would be quite representative of more traditional Portugal. We enjoyed walking along the narrow cobblestone streets that make up Monsanto, and we also enjoyed taking in the cute houses and animal pens surrounded by large granite boulders. As we continued walking through the town, we slowly made our way towards Monsanto Castle, which was originally built by the Knights Templar and offers panoramic views from the castle walls. After our time in Monsanto, we headed to a town called Castelo de Vida, which is where our accommodation was, and just enjoyed a short walk through the town, as well as some dinner and drinks. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed exploring central Portugal with us, and I hope that this has convinced you to visit this awesome region. If you enjoyed our video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and leave a tip with the super thanks button if so inclined. Always helpful. Don't forget to stay tuned for our next video where we go to the northern Portuguese towns of the Aroca Bridge, Braga, and Guimarães. See you at the next one. Bye!